Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom. And welcome again to another week of our light to the lost sheep of Israel. We are your hosts. I am Brother Makadai Israel. Brother Bethuel Yahudi Israel. Hallelujah. And this week we're going to be going into righteous judgment in Yahweh. Breakdown of Romans chapter 2. Hallelujah. I know, I know it's been a while, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, we are as servants of Yahweh, we have lives too. You know, me and my Isha, as you all know, y'all seen the testimony. We went away on vacation for a while and just ending the summer up, you know, going uh, to travel to go see family and friends and uh, end off the summer that way. So now we're back. We back in effect. We're going to um, switch up things a little bit with our channel too. me and brother Bessowell. He's actually going to be the reader for me today. And we're going to be um, basing this study uh, strictly off of Romans chapter 2. There's a few other uh, places we might go. And um, we're going to be shortening up our messages as well. So before we begin, though, um, one other thing I want to add is because if y'all notice, um, and also if you're new to our channel, please like, share, and subscribe, you know, so that we can uh, get more of this truth out to our brothers and sisters who are lost because of religion, because of uh, worldly uh, views from men and just being led astray, all right? Um, one thing I wanna add, um, if you notice in our past videos, a lot of times I will speak on world events, things, you know, as watchmen, we try to bring, you know, anything that's going on. So, you know, y'all willing, what I wanna do is just like Brother Betzoal, he has his page. And, what's, and tell our uh, listening audience the name of your YouTube page again, brother. Is Mother Africa be calling? Yeah. So it's all it's all one word. It's all ran together. It's the you know Mother Africa be calling, and each word is kept the first letter is capitalized. So it's Mother Africa be calling. All one word. But each letter, each of the word, each word, the first letter you'll see that is capitalized. Hallelujah. So, and so what I was going to say is so instead of trying to run everything together on this study what i'm gonna do is now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna break off with another channel under my name in which i can bring to you things that i see going on in the world in the community all right but until then um one thing i want to uh, speak on real briefly and we're going to go ahead straight in this because like i said we're going to try to keep this real short and concise is um as you all know london bridge has fallen down and whoever don't know what that code word means the queen of england has fallen and has uh fell asleep and is dead so um one thing i want to read real quick um for everybody who don't know and this is one thing that really gets under my skin about paganism and this is why i had a conversation with my mother the other day and this is what i told her because my mother uh you know was born and raised just like myself in christianity the religion I told her in the sense of the word uh, Christian, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a messianic follower of Yeshua in the sense of the word. You know, they know it as Christian. We say we are messianic Hebrew Israelites as in followers of Yeshua. And if you are a follower of, a follower of the Messiah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I, what I told her was the problem is that word Christianity. The religion is the problem, okay? Now, if you say that you are a follower of Yeshua HaMashiach, then Yah bless you, all right? That is what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be following the Mashiach. But, however, if you're following according to the ordinances of Christianity, that is where the problem is because Christianity is pagan, okay? This is no dig at anybody that's studying Christianity. It's against the people that are teaching you. It is pagan and it is wrong and it is leading y'all astray. And we are to the point now where we are in the crunch time and we don't have time for that anymore. We want to lead you. We are, me and Brother Betzoel are fishers of men and we're trying to lead you back to the Father. Okay? So, with that said, um, one thing that gets underneath my skin from Christianity is that Christianity teaches us that once you die, you go straight to heaven. That is a lie. Okay, and we have to debunk that. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because that's what people think. Right now, Queen Elizabeth has just died and she's in heaven. That is not true. In fact, 
according to uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, I have it right here. It says, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So according to what I'm bringing out today in righteous judgment in Yahweh, Queen Elizabeth, along with me, along with Brother Bethsoel, along with my Isha, my mother, anybody else we know, we all have to go through Yahweh's judgment. And we all have to be judged according to what we have done in these bodies. So we have to stop that mindset, brothers and sisters, that we are die, we die and we go straight to heaven. Because that is a stumbling block to our people and it allows our people to continue to sin and to continue in this foolishness that they're in today. All right. So before we begin, you want to add anything to that, brother, briefly, before we go into the study? You're mute, you muted yourself, too, by the way. Yeah. I forgot I did that. Yeah. There so yeah. So no, brother. Um, to go ahead into go into the study. It's all right. So yep, because like we said, we're gonna keep it short and concise here on out. We're gonna try to keep our videos around thirty minutes long, and uh, if, if if it goes a little bit more because of the information, so be it. But we definitely want to keep it around 30, 45 minutes, and uh, so we can uh go ahead and keep everybody's attention. So um, all right, we're gonna go ahead and start in the book of Romans, chapter two. And I'm going to have Brother Betzel read uh, verse 1 to start this off. So Romans 2, verse 1 starts with, says, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge, for what and whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. Did y'all hear that? You who judge practice the same thing. Basically what... This the apostle Paul here is saying is that you know you are inexcusable when you judge another and you're doing the same thing. So for instance, if I'm an adulterer running around on my wife, I have absolutely no business bringing judgment to another who's who's running around on his wife. You know, because that's that's just like what Yahshua said. You know, how you gonna judge your brother when you got that beam in your eye? You know. We, this is about righteous judgment. So your conscience have to be clear. You got to be practicing the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh before you go after another. There's absolutely nothing wrong with judging, but this going into the realm of criticism. You're criticizing somebody when you're living a, a abominable lifestyle yourself. That is the problem. So with that said, let's go to, uh, that was the opening scripture. Let's go to the book of John chapter 7. And I'm going to have Brother Betzowell start at verse 10 and read down to 24, please. So we had John, and we're going to go to 7, and we're going from 10 to 24. Yep. All righty. So, but when his brothers had gone up, then he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Yehudim sought him at the feast and said where is he and there was much complaining among the people concerning him some said he is good others said no on the contrary he deceives the people however no one spoke openly of him for the fear of the Yehudim now about the middle of the feast Yahshua went up into the temple and taught and when the Yehudim marveled saying I'm sorry, and the Yehudim Marvel saying, how does this man know letters having never studied? Stop, stop right there for a minute, brothers and sisters. I mean, excuse me, brother Bethuel. Uh, This verse right here says, and the Yehudim Marvel saying, how does this man know letters? Well, basically, how does this man have so much knowledge, never even having studied with them and seeing him study? We all know this is Yahshua HaMashiach. He is the Torah Yahweh. He is the word of Yahweh. He is the wisdom of Yahweh. So it's already in, ingrained in him. All yes. right, go ahead, brother. Yes. And so starting to get at 16, Yahshua answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but, but his who sent me. If oh. anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from Yahweh or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from him from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moshe, speaking of Moses, give you the law? 
yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? Yep. You hear that? You See hear that? There it is right there. He caught him because as you are trying to condemn an innocent man, okay, then that means you're not even hearing the Torah because the Torah tells us that we are not to kill, especially innocent blood. So he caught him and tripped him up. Go ahead, brother. Read verse 20. Okay. The people answered and said, you have a demon who is seeking to kill you. Mm. Yeshua answered and said to them, I did one work and you all marveled. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcised a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath so that the law of Moshe, Moses, should not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do you not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment? Hallelujah. There it is right there. You heard it from the mouth of the master. When you judge, you must judge righteous judgment. And that, is, that righteousness comes from Yahweh's Torah. Or Yahweh's instructions. That's how we know how to judge someone righteously. Don't judge according to the appearance. That's why I tell people this all the time. And I got to be honest, brothers and sisters. And this is not to criticize against nobody, but this is the absolute truth. When it comes to people in Christianity, y'all talk about how you don't want to judge nobody to judge you. You don't want to judge nobody. But y'all talk about people's appearance all the time. I notice this because I'm quiet and I'm listening to people. All right. And I tell people all the time, the master does not want us to judge according to the appearance. And if you must judge, you must judge righteously. And what is righteously is according to the Torah of Yahweh. So if we as Hebrew Israelites, we see that you're not keeping the Sabbath, even though the master Yeshua HaMashiach kept the Sabbath, even though Paul kept the Sabbath, even though Peter kept the Sabbath, but we see that you're not keeping the Sabbath. We're going to tell you you're wrong and we're going to explain to you why you're wrong. And we're going to hope that you repent and turn back to Yahweh. So our judgment is not to criticize you. Ultimately, our judgment as Hebrew Israelites to you as sinners is for you to stop sinning and for you to turn back to Yahweh and start being obedient to him in faith. Hallelujah. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and move. We're going to go to uh, the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and 17. With this um, in mind, here. Okay. We've read this scripture many, many times. All right? So we can't continue on this mind frame of us. Let's, let's not judge nobody. Please don't judge me. All right? Judgment is righteous. Especially we are everybody on this planet has to go through judgment. Everybody. All right, go ahead, brother. All righty. So uh, 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of Yahweh. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the, the word of Yahweh? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely, scarcely saved, where will the unrighteous in the center appear? That's good right there, bro. So Y'all hear what it says? It said, for the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of Yahweh. Judgment is going to begin with all those who are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh. All right? We are going to be the ones that's going to be judged first. That's why I said, right now, the queen is awaiting her judgment. She's falling asleep. Did she do enough to uh, please Yahweh? That is between her and Yahweh. So how are we going to say? We don't know the mind of Yahweh. We don't know what the relationship of the queen and Yahweh is. Who are we to say that she's in heaven? We don't know that. When anybody in our family pass on, who are we to say that they are in heaven? And then it's this thing of happy heavenly birthday and all that foolishness. Because judgment is going to begin with the house of Yahweh. And then after the house of Yahweh, guess who it go to next? It goes to all those who's outside of the house of Yahweh. And do you know why that is, brothers and sisters? The reason why is because after the saints are judged, then the then Yahweh is going to use the saints to judge all the nations. That's why. That's why judgment is going to begin with Yahweh's people first. 
Because once we are approved, if you are blessed enough to be approved, because nobody knows if they if they got a spot yet, but if you're blessed to uh, make it to the kingdom, you're going to be judging the nation. He said we're going to be a nation of, of kings and priests, and we're going to be the ones judging the nations. All right, let's go to um, Romans chapter two, verses. We're going to read verses two and three. All righty. But we know that the judgment of Yahweh is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O oh man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of Yahweh? Self-explanatory right there. And that's what a lot of us believe this day, that we can get away with judging people and criticizing people as if Yahweh is not going to judge us as well like he's just going to gloss over us in the, in the judgment no every last one of us have to make an account of what we do in these bodies every last one of us let's go to a supporting scripture real quick proverbs chapter 11 and read verse 21 proverbs chapter 11 and we're going to go to 21 let's do it all righty though they join forces the wicked will not go unpunished but the, but the posterity of the righteous will be delivered. So did you hear that? The writer of Proverbs 11 is saying that the wicked will not go unpunished. So all of you who believe that people die and go straight to heaven, wicked included, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very, you know, funny to me that, you know, we look at some of the lives of some of these people around us, but for some reason we see how wicked they are, how selfish they were, in their lives, how mean they were to people. None of them kept the Sabbath, so the uh, feast days of Yahweh. None of them tried to keep the commandments of Yahweh, but yet somehow they're going to end up in heaven. And we believe that these, these wicked people are going to be there in heaven waiting for the saints. That is ridiculous for us to even think. You know, we got to stop. We got to stop believing that. And that's the stumbling block of Christianity to have us believe that you know, all the rest of us that are striving and trying to be obedient the best we can, you know, we got to do this in faith and we got to serve Yahweh day in, in and day out. But the wicked, all they got to do is just continue to live in sin and they're going to make it to heaven. We got to stop believing in that, brothers and sisters. All right. Let's go back to Romans and we're going to read uh, verse four. Romans two, verse four. Verse four. All righty. So. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of Yahweh leads you to repentance? And that's what this is all about, brothers and sisters. The whole message of the Bible is for us to repent and return back to Yahweh and stop sinning. It's just that simple. We have to stop sinning. And what is a sin? A sin is the transgression of Yahweh's commandments. We have to stop it and we have to be obedient. All right. And how do Yahweh know what's in us? Let's go to Jer Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. And it reads, I, Yahweh, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. You hear that? Yahweh is going to search your heart and your mind. You cannot hide anything from Yahweh. Come on now. Christianity is a religion of all mouth. How do I know? Because I used to be a, a Christian. As in the religion Christianity. And it was all about mouth profession. But it was, it was void of action though. You can have all the mouth you want. But Yahweh is going to look in your heart. And see that you're void of action. Or what y'all call works. You got to have faith and you got to have works in order for Yahweh to take you serious. You only got faith. He ain't going to take you serious. If you only got works and no faith, he's not going to take you serious. You got to have both. All right. That's the message that we are trying to kick to you today. All right. Let's go back to Romans chapter two. We're going to read verses five through nine. All right, let's do it. And I hope this ain't 
coming off as if we're trying to rush because we, we're not trying to rush but we're trying to get right to the point and, and bring this home and bring you to Yahweh according to his truth righty okay so but in accordance with the hardness and your impenitent impenitent heart you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Yahweh who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory honor and immortality but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Yehudim first and also to the Greek you hear but, that mm -hmm. well let's stop right there brother y'all hear that real quick he said that he's going to give eternal life to those who by patient continuous continuance in doing good seek yeah. for glory honor and immortality how do yeah. you do that you do it by being obedient to the laws statutes and commandments of yahweh and have faith in yashua that's how you do that but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish of every soul of man who does evil said to the yahudim first we said the judgment first has to begin at the house of yahweh and then it's going to go to the gentile or in this verse the greek all right this is this is serious brothers and sisters we have to pay attention to this all right so a supporting scripture let's go to uh hebrews chapter 10 and 31. it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living yahweh almighty you hear that and what does that mean brothers and sisters what does that mean see the problem is it comes down to reverence it comes down to the fear of yahweh we who are, are the house of yahweh we have that fear of yahweh mm -hmm. we know how serious he is we know that we must be obedient but for you let me tell you something on that day i can't speak for the queen but can you imagine living a whole life of wickedness all to get to your deathbed and be shaking in your boots because you know you're about to be face to face with the almighty and you know you wasn't obedient that is that fearful thing because it's going to come down to that day of judgment and you're going to be afraid if you haven't turned to yahweh you are going to be afraid because some of us are afraid and and we're trying our best but it's a fearful thing when you when you disobedient and you got to be turned over to Yahweh to be in front of that great white throne because you don't have any more time to repent your time is right there when 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 you are here right now excuse me your time is right now to turn to Yahweh basically all I'm saying is right here and right now is the time that we got to repent there is no later we got to repent and turn to Yahweh while we can right now. All right, so with that said, we're going to go back to Romans chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 10 to 19. But esteem, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good. To the Yehudim first and also to the Greek or the Gentile. For there is no partiality with Yahweh. For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of Yahweh, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves who show the work of the law written in their hearts their conscience also bearing witness and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing excusing them in the day when Yahweh will judge the secrets of men by Yahshua HaMashiach according to 
my gospel. Indeed, you are called a Yehudim and rest on the law and make your boast in Yahweh and know his will and approve the things that are excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness. Hallelujah. So yeah. look, when you are a hearer of the law and a doer of the law, then you have so much light inside of you that you can take it to those who are blind and bring them back to Yahweh. If you only got a portion of it, how are you going to bring them back to Yahweh? Your understanding will be zero. It will be minimal. Okay. If you don't have an understanding of Yahweh's Torah, that's the first five books of Moses. If you don't understand that at all, you shouldn't even be in Paul's letters. All right. That's first and foremost. All right. You will never listen to me, Christians. Listen to me right now. And I don't care what you say. You will never understand Paul's epistles if you have no base in the Torah. You will never because Paul was a Pharisee. And that's all that the Pharisees was doing at that time was studying Torah day in and day out. And this is what he's talking to you about. He's talking to you about Torah. He just said it right here. It's not the hearers of the law that are just in the sight of Yahweh, but it's the doers of the law. So yes, we got to hear the law, but if only you're doing is hearing the law and just talking and you're not putting it to action, that's what he means, that he's not going to take you serious. Okay, you have to hear the law and you have to put it to action. All right. With that said, let's go to uh, Luke chapter one, verse 79. Something I want to bring out into the record today because we got to take this serious. See, he said the Gentiles who don't have the law by nature do the things in law. That's because some some people who haven't really even heard the Bible, or heard the law like that, still do the things that they supposed to do. They still know that killing is wrong. They still know adultery is wrong. They still know we got to obey and, and honor your mother and your father. So if they do these things, then it's going to be counted as righteousness to them because they didn't, they, they wasn't even given a law, but they trying their best to be righteous anyway in the sight of Yahweh. All right. And here a bunch of us as Christians was given a law and we still living wickedly. Come on, brothers and sisters. We got to turn to Yahweh while we can. Go ahead, brother. Okay. To give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. You hear that? That's what me and Brother Betzel was trying our best to do. We're trying to be a light to those who are in darkness. That's what fishers of men do. All right? And going back to the beginning of our ministry, we was criticized for trying to do just that. But I refuse to listen to any man that's flesh and blood tell me not to try to bring people to Yahweh. How dare you? No, our job as any any believer is to, is to bring as much people and souls as we can to Yahweh. While, especially in today's time, because we don't have a lot of time left, brothers and sisters. All right? Let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and finish this up. Let's go to our room. 20 to 23. My bad. 20 to 23? No problem. Yeah. All righty. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and truth in the law. You therefore who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Mm -hmm. You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the law, do you dishonor Yahweh through the breaking of the law? See, that is right there. So nowhere in this scripture is he saying, Look, when it comes to Christianity, uh, don't judge each other at all. He's not saying that. He's just saying that if you basically are, you know, preaching this word and basically you 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 judging somebody that's still, do you still too? See, because if you if you are a thief, then you have no business judging somebody else that is a thief. Come that's basically now. what he's saying. Come on now. But Christianity teaches us that we're not even supposed to say anything to a, a thief. We're not supposed to judge a thief at all. That's 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 crazy to me. All right, let's go to uh three chapter um two verses twenty-four through twenty-seven. Twenty-four through twenty-seven, okay. 
for the name of Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. But if you are a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? Mm -hmm. And will not the physical uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who, even with your written code and circumcision, are a transgressor of the law? Yep. So he's saying basically for circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the Torah. You keeping the instructions? Yeah, it's profitable being be, be uh circumcised. And besides this, brothers and sisters, the physical circumcision, it, it, Paul will tell you is nothing. All right, and uncircumcision is nothing. What matters is the keeping of the laws, statutes, and commandments. That's what he tell you. All right, but yeah, as tradition and as the custom states, this is what Yahweh wants us to do. So go ahead and do it. All right. Not saying that the physical circumcision is what's going to get you saved, because the only thing that's going to get you saved. Is your belief in Yahshua. That's what's going to get you saved. That's right. All right. But at the same time, Yahweh ordered us as males to be physically circumcised. But the true circumcision is the circumcision of the heart. All right. And that's inside your mind. And that means to stop sin. Okay. It's just that simple. We, we're trying our best to simplify things for you. Circumcision means to stop sinning. All right. Cut all that, that, that flesh from around your heart. All that stuff that makes you sin, all that lust. Cut that lust from around your heart and start being obedient to Yahweh. All right? You know, like if you're a man and you, like for instance, you're a man and you like pornography, cut that mess out of your life. All right? How are you going to have a, 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 a holy state of mind, a set apart state of mind, and you focus on looking at other people having sex all the time? That's wicked as I don't know what. You know, if you're a person that like playing numbers all the time, gambling, Yahweh tell us not to gamble. Don't take your chances on games of chance. It says it in the Bible. We're not supposed to gamble. All right? Now, if you, if you feel like you can't get away from gambling, play uh, for free. Play If you like playing cards, just play cards for free. There's nothing wrong with playing games. The problem is, is when you take money, which is a blessing of Yahweh, and then you're taking it and you're trying your best to uh, earn that money the unrighteous way. Yahweh orders us to work with our hands. It's a curse that's on us. We were just talking about the curses, all right? And we was asking, are we still under the curses? That particular curse we're under because that was a curse that was given to all mankind for us to work by the sweat of our brow. So that we have to do forever. But as far as the curses of the law, if you turn to Yahweh and you serve him, Yahshua will save you from the curse of the law. That's what the scriptures say, all right? All right, so with that said, let's go. We got a few more scriptures. We're going to go ahead and finish this up. Bro, let's go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. For, for those who don't understand what I just said, because you know Hebrews, they like to talk. What do you mean we, don't, we ain't under the curses? We Israelites. Yes, we are under the curses and we're under the blessings too. Deuteronomy chapter 28 isn't just about the curses. It's about the blessings as well. And when you turn to Yahweh and you doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you're part of the body of Yahshua, he's going to bless you. All right? But don't mistake affliction for curses. That's all we're saying. All right? Yes, we still got to be afflicted because the scriptures say many are the afflictions of the righteous. But Yahweh will take you, will, will bring you out of each and every one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to read our 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. All right. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world and if the world would be judged by you are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters you hear that so for all you who believe that we're not supposed to judge each other how we ain't going to be in the practice of judging people according to yahweh's righteous judgment and here we're going to judge the entire world we just spoke on that uh at the beginning of this and if we can't judge if we're going to be judging the world how is it that we're unworthy to judge the smallest matters that's because that's what that religion has taught us to do. That religion has taught us to turn a blind eye to people messing up. All right. But if we are in the truth 
And if we are walking in the spirit, it is our duty to point our brothers and sisters back into the right path of Yahweh. Hallelujah. All right, we got uh, one more here in Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 15, and then we got a couple more and we'll be finished. Okay, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. See, if you are a spiritual man, and you're doing what you're supposed to do in Yahweh, it's your duty to be able to judge the things that you see. Because you're not judging it based off of your own heart. You're judging it based off of Yahweh's will. All right. So ultimately, it's Yahweh who judge. All right. But us as the body of Yahshua, you know, it's our duty to point things out, to try to point them people back to Yahweh. All right. One last uh, verse in the book of Romans chapter 2. And then we got a closing scripture. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. All right. But he is a Yehudim who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit not in the letter mm -hmm. whose praise is not from men but from yahweh hallelujah y'all hear that circumcision is that of the heart we just said that cut that 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 lust and all that temptation and all that fornication and all that stuff away from your heart because if you are truly walking in the spirit and i hear this from people all the time from the religion of christianity say i am in the spirit I am in the spirit, but still are in the world. How are you in the spirit and you still walking after the lust of this world? It's impossible. You can't possibly be in the spirit. If you are in the spirit, then you're not going to do those things, which is which are contrary to the spirit. If you living in the flesh, there's no way that you can be walking in the spirit. It's just no way, brothers and sisters. So basically, the whole premise of Romans chapter two is Yahweh's righteous judgment. Okay, and you know, if you as Gentiles come into the truth, you know, you must keep the laws, statutes, and commandments as well. Yahweh gave one Torah to both the Yahudim and to the Gentile. Okay? And like I put on my post today, Yahweh's house of prayer is going to be a house of prayer for all people. All right? So we all must do that which Yahweh commands. All right? With that said, we got one closing scripture in the book of Galatians chapter 6 and we're going to read chapter um, 6 verses 7 through 8 and then we're going to read 16 then we're going to be finished with this all right do not be deceived Yahweh is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap mm-hmm for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Mm -hmm. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Hallelujah. And one last, one last verse. All right here in 16. And as many as walk according to the rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon Israel of Elohim. Hallelujah. So look, don't be deceived. Yahweh is never going to be mocked, brothers and sisters. So whatever you sow in these bodies, he will also reap. Whatever Queen Elizabeth sowed in her body, she's going to have to reap. Her, her, her awaiting right now, she can close her eyes. She's waiting to talk face to face with the Almighty. All right? That's, that's between her and the Almighty. It's not for us to even worry about anymore. For, for look at what it says. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So if she lived in the flesh, a lot of people over there in that land and in Jamaica and all those providences that she ruled over say that she didn't rule righteously. So if she didn't rule righteously, she's going to reap um, corruption. All right. We know that the European has a tendency to go into lands and oppress people. So if that was her agenda, if that's the agenda of her, uh, her uh, bloodline, then that's what she got to sow. But if you are one who, who, who sows to the spirit, you're going to reap everlasting life. 
all right? Because the spirit comes from Yahweh. And Yahweh is going to lead you to do his will. He ain't going to lead you to do that in the flesh. So last verse, he says, and as many as walk according to this rule, shalom and mercy be upon you and upon the Israel of Yahweh. And who's the Israel of Yahweh? That is the congregation of Yahweh. All of you Gentiles or all you who are outside the body of Yahshua, if you want to be a part of this, you have to convert to the Israel of Yahweh. It's just that simple. And you're reading it right here in one of Paul's letters in Galatians 6, one of the most disputed books of all of our Paul's epistles because it's the, it's the one book that Christianity tries to use the most to try to influence their religion. But if you read Galatians very, very carefully, you'll see that the book of Galatians isn't what you think it is. This book of Galatians, this letter, is not written to a Christian church. It's written to a Hebrew congregation in Israel. And you see the marker right here in verse 16. With that said, that's all I got today. Brother, you want to speak on it before we close this off? Yeah. Well, just to add to it, um, regarding the queen, you know, um, we will know who they are by the fruit they bear. So that's how we, you know, as going back, as you were saying that, you know, we, uh, and that Christianity is keep putting out there. Everybody's up in heaven, everybody in heaven. So let's just say they're basically saying that everybody will receive peace and everlasting life with the father and everybody did pass away. But, but it's a lie from the pit of hell because just as we read, you will reap what you sow. And so if you um, come down to it from a history of gaining your wealth being passed down from you off of kidnapping, rape, brutality, enslavement, destruction of families, countries, and your wealth is built up on greed and this misery for the world and you then never repent all, all everything you have is stolen from before you was born from generations up until you if you accumulate and you still have diamonds and wealth that was stolen from other countries and then you then go rule over other countries with an iron fist that's not even your land and then you never repent because we know you didn't repent because you did not restore the people you did not restore those things that were taken you never did anything but live up to your ancestors and then you pass away and you take all you all that wealth and everything that was stolen and people are now living in poverty and and in destruction and mayhem and, and disease and all kinds of stuff because of your family's oppression and your people's oppression and your oppression and you've never changed it. And then you then take your last breath. I'm going to go with what it says. You reap what you sow and I'm going to also go with the word with the, with the word says. You will know them by the fruit that they bear. So therefore, I don't need nobody to tell me what's going to happen the word tells me what's going to happen it's trouble for those who live this way and their degrees of torment in the lake of fire they're going into the lake of fire that's that's it that's all i gotta say bro all right so with that said like we said we're gonna keep it short and concise so with that said let's give all praise and honor to the almighty yahweh in the name of his only begotten son Yeshua HaMashiach, our high priest and our soon to come king, redeemer and deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With that said, brothers and sisters, y'all willing, we see y'all again next week. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom.